Recording gameplay has never been easier. Anyone can do it, but not many people can do it right. Laggy footage, blurry footage, or just no sound at all. Today, we're gonna show you how to record game footage in OBS, as well as all the settings to make the quality amazing, crisp, and clear, to make both your microphone and your game sound perfect, but then I'm gonna show you the most important thing you will learn, something massive gaming YouTubers do for every recording, and that is how to record both your gameplay and a webcam or camera at the same time inside OBS without burning the webcam over the top of the game. This gives you clean footage, meaning you can focus on one or the other, zoom in on either without issues, and make your edits far more engaging for viewers. Let's go. Obviously, to do all of this, you need to install OBS. So head to obsproject.com, I'll link it in the description, and download for your operating system. Click install once it's done and you're ready to go. OBS is an incredible tool. You can use it to not just record games, but anything on your computer. You can stream with it, add graphics like these free overlays I made for you guys, or you can get much more professional, fully animated packs as well. So before we show you how to set up your video settings properly, let's show you how to enter the giveaway. Owned has given me dozens of vouchers to give out to you guys in the comments. These work alongside their global sale as well, which means anytime they put up a sale, you can grab pretty much any of their overlay packs, graphics, banners for your YouTube channel, you name it, for free or even just a few dollars. As I said, I'm giving them away in the comments. All you have to do to enter is comment hashtag owned giveaway and then what graphics you'd buy. Maybe it's an overlay, maybe it's some sub badges, or maybe it's just a YouTube banner. Massive thank you to Own for sponsoring this video. If you want to support me, please go and support them with the link in the description or by entering the giveaway in the comments. Now, let's get back to the video. Once you have OBS installed, you're going to open open it and see this big black box. This is called a preview window. This is where your gameplay and graphics will be. But first, I want to set up your video settings. Now, I know a lot of videos just give you a bunch of specific settings and tell you to copy them without explaining in any detail why. And I hope you'll forgive me, but I hated my math teacher for doing this sort of thing to me. So I'm going to make this simple for beginners while also trying to make sure you don't leave this video with no idea what to change if something goes wrong. If you understand what you're changing and why, you'll be far more likely to get better footage and not hit massive snags and find yourself back at this video asking questions. So head to settings, click video, and first thing we're gonna do is pick a resolution. Now, personally, I always record at 1920 by 1080p on both my base canvas and my output canvas. The difference between these two settings is essentially base canvas is your preview window size and the output is what your final video size is gonna be. The two main resolutions you'll pick between are 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. These days, 1080p tends to be standard, but if you are on a low-end computer, 720p might be a better option for you. So if you find your OBS struggling later, you can come back here and drop the output to 720 and that way you're scaling down 1080 to 720 for better quality, but it won't be so intense on your PC. Below that is our FPS or frames per second. You'll set this to either 30 or 60 most of the time. However, if you're say Australian like I am or European or another country that uses what's called PAL, you might want your FPS set to 25 or 50 depending on where you're sending the footage later. I'm in Australia and I still use 30 or 60 because it doesn't matter most of the time since everything just goes to YouTube these days. With that, where moving on to our output. Personally, I used advanced mode, so I do recommend you do as well. So select that here in the output section. Since we're focused on recording today, we will click this tab that says recording. But if you want a guide on streaming settings, then please let me know in the comments and subscribe. I'll make that soon. Let's go down through the settings one at a time. First is recording path. This is where the recordings you make will be saved. I recommend making a folder called OBS recordings somewhere that you won't forget, and then setting this setting to that. Below that is recording format. The most common you'll know is MP4 or or potentially MOV, but we're not going to record as either of those because if we did and your OBS or PC crashed, turned off, or generally stopped recording when you didn't want it to, the file would corrupt and be unusable, which means you might lose hours of work. So instead, we're gonna be recording as MKV files, and don't worry, I'll show you how to convert those to MP4 files later without issue inside OBS, so you can edit them. Below that, we have our video encoder. This used to be so simple, but it's gotten more confusing as more graphics cards have become decent for content creation. Damn computer engineers and trying to improve our hardware for us. So look, I will try and keep it simple for you by focusing on just three of these. Today, we're gonna to talk about NVENC H.264, X.264, and AV1. To make this straightforward, if you're using any NVIDIA card past the GTX 600, which was released in 2012, so likely any NVIDIA card being used on a semi-new PC, you're going to pick NVENC H.264. This means you're using a special chip on your graphics card to encode footage. This chip is separate and just used solely for 
for encoding and decoding. So it won't affect your gameplay performance at all. And if you're using a graphics card from before that or isn't compatible with NVENC, then you'll likely have to use X264, which will be using your CPU to encode and decode instead of your graphics card. Finally, AV1 is a newer encoder and I will be honest, I'm still learning the best case for using it. And I'll link instead a video directly in the description by Epos Vox, who has done extensive testing on this kind of thing if you want a deep dive. Below that, you have audio tracks and encoder. I left this as FFmpeg AAC, but I did turn on all six audio tracks. This is very important because it means I could split my audio up so my mic and my game aren't burned in together in my footage later. Again, very recommended. You'll see why later though. Now, depending on if you use NVENC or X264, you will need to use different settings below, specifically for bitrate mostly. A lot of people get bitrate confused because it's often talked about in relation to streaming on Twitch, which has a soft cap of 6,000. But bitrate, simply put, is the amount of information being saved or sent really. Higher bit rates mean more information or higher quality, but it also means it is more taxing on your computer resources. Because of Twitch, I see a lot of new creators record footage offline at 6,000 bitrate, except that is actually a really low bitrate for recording 1080p footage. Heck, it's even low for streaming, but Twitch just decided to soft cap it there and tell you all to get screwed. So let's set this up properly for recording. In the encoder settings, you have rate control. This will be set to CBR by default, which means you're recording at the same bitrate all the time. And below that is where you set the bitrate that you wanna be recording at all the time. I found for 1080p 60 frames per second that recording at 15,000 to 18,000 bitrate gave me excellent quality for editing my gameplay footage down later but any higher than that, I couldn't really tell a difference. That said, 8,000 to 9,000 bitrate did still give me usable and clean footage. So if your PC is struggling, start at 8,000 or 9,000 and slowly increase to increase your quality. The issue is though, because CBR means I'm recording the same bitrate the entire time, I end up with massive files and a lot of wasted data. I did it because Twitch preferred CBR and it just kind of stuck. But if you want to get a little more complicated in recordings, instead, I would recommend selecting CQP which in short is smarter and will change the bitrate as needed so you're not wasting data. This does mean rather than setting a bitrate, you're setting a CQ level, which again, in short, a low number here means higher quality footage, but high numbers mean lower quality. I found recording at 15 gave me footage that was perfect and indistinguishable to viewers, so zero issues. But 20 will also give totally usable footage. So again, if your OBS can't handle 15, start at 20 and slowly lower it down by one until you find a nice balance. Below that we have preset. A good starting place for this is to set it to good quality, but again, it's quite self-explanatory. Changing this up or down uses more or less computer resources, but of course changes quality slightly. Below that is tuning. I set mine to high quality, but again, that is more intensive, slower, but better footage. Now, multi-pass mode lets you tell OBS to do another pass on the encoding. A single pass means this is off, two quarter res means it's better than single, and two full res is the highest. I don't think many of you will be able to distinguish a difference, so single is fine for most, especially on low-end PCs. I don't wanna overcomplicate this for you. Finally, since you're using NVENC, leave on psychovisual tuning as NVIDIA recommends it, my GPU is set to zero and my B-frame set to two. I know that was a lot of detail, but hopefully you'll be able to follow my settings and understand how to change these if your PC is struggling. I'll show you how to diagnose if your settings are too high in a second, so stick around. But first, X264 CPU encoding settings are a bit different, so I wanna highlight those quickly. If you change video encoder to X264 and scroll down to the encoder settings, you'll see CBR is the same and it also works the same as previously explained. But instead of CQP, we have CRF. This while being called all different works pretty much the same as CQP for a beginner, aka a lower number is better, but it's more intense on your computer. The other settings are very similar to NVENC as well, but if you're curious, I set mine to very fast and high, and then I adjust if needed. But wait, what does if needed actually mean? How can I tell if OBS is struggling? Well, the fastest way is to actually just record some gameplay and watch the footage back. You'll usually be able to see any issues you're having, but the best way is actually to use the OBS stats panel while recording. Click view and click stats. You'll get a lot of information such as CPU usage, storage space, current FPS, which are all helpful, but the three I want to focus on are dropped, skipped, and lagged frames. Most don't know the difference, but learning this will make life a lot easier for troubleshooting. If you're not streaming and just recording, then dropped frames won't happen. Dropped frames are when your internet or network are having connection or stability issues. So imagine you're sending your video over the internet through a big tube, but there's holes in the tube and frames keep leaking out. Next is lagged frames seen here, and these are caused by high GPU use which means to solve these, you need to free up room on your GPU by lowering your resolution, general video settings, or other encoding settings a bit, as 
I showed you earlier. Below that is skip frames, which are caused by high CPU usage. And again, lowering your resolution, your general video settings, other encoder settings, or if possible, switch to NVENC to utilize your GPU more and give your CPU room to breathe. But with all of that, congratulations, the hard part is over. Now it is smooth sailing. If you tried to record gameplay right now, you'd get a big black screen with no audio. And I'm sure there is an audience for that, but it's probably pretty niche. So let's add our audio settings now. Click settings, go to audio, and you'll be met with six global audio devices. If you're using a microphone and want to record your voice while gaming, you'll click Mic Ox Audio 1 and select your microphone from the list. Then for all other PC audio, such as games, Spotify, music, etc., you'll click desktop audio and set this to your default Windows system audio. For me, that is my system bridge cast, but for you, it might be called headphones, speakers, or something else. To confirm it, you can go to the Windows settings and whatever the output is here you use normally will likely work, or just set it to default. Once you've added both of these, click apply, and then go down to the audio mixer dock. Click the three dots and click vertical layout. This is really important because only freaks and sickos use horizontal levels. Now I want you to click the dot 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 again and rename mic aux to microphone and desktop to gaming. This is just to make it a bit neater. While recording later, you can use these sliders to change how loud your voice and games are recorded. The goal is for voice to reach roughly minus 12 dB and the game should sit around minus 30 to minus 24. It's important to understand that all audio on your PC will be picked up on desktop audio. So if you're recording your game and watching Netflix, well, now you've got Netflix audio in in the recording and everyone knows you love watching The Good Doctor. This is a really simple audio setup, but it's just to get you started. If you want a detailed video on how to split audio sources, well, that will be linked in the description because it's far more complex. Before we move on though, click the three dots again and click advanced audio properties. Over on the right, you will see tracks and a heap of checkboxes. Earlier in the settings, we turned on all six tracks for recording, remember? And I said how important it was. I'd recommend turning off everything to start with. And now if you're streaming, normally everything is sent to track one because that's what your stream will hear. But for recording, you can split these up. I will set everything to track one just for safety, but then I will set my microphone to track two and my game to track three. This means if I take my footage into editing software later, my game and microphone are separate so I can edit them individually. If we didn't do this and I wanted to make my game louder or quieter, well, I'd be affecting my voice as well. Again, you can split this all up further, such as recording Discord on its own track as well with the video in the description. But with our audio added, it's time to capture your game. And then I will show you my literal magic settings to record clean gameplay and camera in the same file. First in OBS on the left, you will have a scenes doc. Rename this to game scene. And then right next to it is the sources doc. We're adding a source to this doc that captures your game. So click the plus and you're met with a list of potential sources. Your eye probably went straight to game capture, which we can use, but there are actually three options that are used for three different things. If we add game capture and double click it, you'll see mode. Most leave this on full screen application, but I prefer changing this to capture specific window and then selecting my game under that. I leave on anti-cheat, but something people often forget is your capture cursor. Turn this on or off if you want your mouse in the recording. And that is all you need for game capture, but sometimes OBS won't recognize or let you capture certain games. In these cases, you'll use window or if it's really dire, desktop capture. Window capture works the exact same as game. You pick your window and you're done. But again, if game capture and window capture aren't working, well, then you can use desktop capture. Just please be very careful doing this as it captures obviously the entire desktop, your entire monitor that you select including if you minimize or alt tab the game, you can reveal your desktop and all those homework folders you're hiding from your mom. But with that done, what if you wanna record your webcam as well so people can see your reactions to getting that sick triple collateral on dust? Well, click the plus, add camera source and select your webcam. Ta-da! Now, if you recorded this, you'd be burning this camera in over the footage. You can't remove it easily later. And while you might be fine with that, I personally hate it. So instead, let me show you a trick giant YouTubers use every day. Go to profile at the top and click duplicate. Name this wide recording. Now in your settings, you'll see everything should still be the same, but we're going to change a few things. First, we're gonna go to video and change our resolution to be double the width. So 1920 by 1080 becomes 3840 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 becomes 2560 by 720. Hit apply and go to output recording settings. Now, if you're using CBR to keep your settings simple, then you'll need to double or potentially depending on the game, if it's really high movement, increase your bitrate by 2.5 times. So for example, if I was using 8,000 bitrate, I would go to either 16,000 or 20,000. And if you're using CQP or CRF, you'll drop this down a little lower, but I found 15 still gave me pretty great quality. 
Obviously, remember increasing bitrate and resolution like this will increase the load on your PC, so this might not work for a low-end computer. But for now, once that's done, hit apply. Go back to your source list and make sure your game is full screen on the left and your camera is full screen on the right with no overlap. This means we now have essentially two 1920 by 1080 p sections on our screen being recorded at the same time. So start recording as normal. Once you're done, stop recording, but wait, that's right. This file is weird, long, and it's also an MKV. So how do I edit any of this? Well, first go to file in OBS, Remux, select the file you recorded and click Remux. This converts it from an MKV to an MP4, because remember, MKV is great to avoid corrupt files, but it's terrible for editing. Open your editor of choice, I love Premiere Pro, and drag the MP4 file in. This will create a timeline that matches its settings, which isn't what we want. So right click the sequence, click settings, and change your resolution from the big wide weird one down to 1920 by 1080, or if you're using 720, down to 720. Now select your clip in the timeline and drag the file over so the game is covering the full screen. Copy it, layer it on top, and then drag the top one over so the cam is full screen. As you can see, my audio is now perfectly synced with both my cam and my game in just a few minutes without either being burned in. If you want, you can add a crop effect and crop the game off from the top layer so it's just the webcam and do the exact same on the bottom, but crop just the webcam out so it's just the game. You'll also see I have six audio tracks. That's because we set these up earlier and you'll see here track one is all of my audio, but track two is just my microphone and track three is just my game or desktop sound. With this, I can edit my gameplay, my camera and all of my audio easily to make the best videos possible. If you wanna learn more about how to set up OBS, get fancy and add graphics, click this video right here. If you wanna learn about all the ways that I create content, I recommend clicking this video. I master seven skills in seven days. It's been called my most valuable video on YouTube. I'll see you guys next week.